Hello and good morning. Uh, this is Joint Work with Khan Nowen and Bolton Renesi. Uh, I'm Stihi. Uh, today we shall discuss how black box reductions naturally lift to setup assumptions. Um, we shall begin our talk uh, with an overview of uh, fully black box reductions. Uh, we're going to give uh, a simple example for concreteness. And then we're going to describe uh, beyond uh, the standard model and uh, introduce uh, that is uh, setup assumptions and uh, slowly one by one uh, identify the issues uh, with just trying to uh, make uh, the reduction work. Um, then we're going to state our result informally. Um, we're going to define uh, more um, in more detail uh, what we mean by set of assumptions and uh, I identify the the basic characteristics and necessary property of one. Um, uh, then we're going to finalize our talk uh, by digging in into the proof and seeking the intuition on earth from uh, this result. Um, let us uh, begin uh, the talk. Let us move to black box constructions. Let there be two primitives, uh, P and Q. Uh, we wish to show that uh, no adversary of uh, some kind, let's say probabilistic polynomial time, can break P. And normally we assume that uh, the adversary cannot break Q. Well, the bread and butter of um, cryptographers worldwide is uh, uh, defining direction R and aim for a proof by contradiction. Um, Namely, if uh, the adversary can uh, break um, P, uh, the um, adversary, uh, the, uh, there is an adversary uh, via a reduction R um, that can uh, break the instantiation of, uh, of uh, Q. Uh, we say that uh, the reduction is a black box um, as it has no uh, internal access to the workings. Uh, of um, the adversary, the primitive. What does that mean in practice, though? Let's work over a concrete example. Um, pick a lamp or runtime signatures. The general idea is that uh, the signer uh, picks uh, um, uh, uh, pairs of uh, randomness. Uh, and uh, they, they utilize one-way functions to effectively commit to that uh, randomness without uh, disclosing it, essentially the, the public key, as we say. Um, then a, a signature um, can be constructed by just uh, revealing um, uh, the corresponding first or second element of uh, its uh, pair for its bit of the message. Um, and thus the full idea, one time, right? Um, in practice, we want efficiency, so next idea comes to mind is, okay, we have proven there's a reduction and things are in the standard model. How about we add a random oracle? Well, um, we, we need to prove our reduction still works with the presence of the random oracle, and we don't have a case uh, where um, uh, it, our, our whole scheme is broken. Um, so our main uh, question is, uh, um, does the adversary break uh, the uh, signatures, uh, the signature scheme we have? Um, well, now the adversary and our instantiation of one-way functions, say, we call def, have access to the random oracle. Uh, there are a few questions. Usually, reduction, let's say in a non programmable uh, uh, case, uh, it provides direct access to, to, to the oracle, essentially, does the back and forth with the, the adversary, um, but does not actually interact with it. So, say we have that covered. Um, how does it handle the adversary now? Because in the standard model, we proved security, and we're discussing as we said, like, probabilistic polynomial time adversaries, that's an example. Well, now, they're, the, the adversaries are all comma scenes. Uh, 
what do we sample over? Uh, how, how do we connect those uh, different uh, random variables that we have to take the, the probability over? Um, and the astute um, uh, in the crowd uh, uh, probably thought, uh, okay, well, what if the adversary is inefficient? and uh, just wants to keep querying the random oracle. What happens? Well, we, a random oracle has an infinite state, so we have to account for that. And uh, this also brings into question that, well, we now need to ensure that um, whatever reduction uh, we have, our, our new const the, the construction we're describing, right? Um, uh, can, can, do we have issues with correctness? I uh, will talk about all this. In summary, we need to reason about reductions that now have access to a random oracle. Under this new setup assumption, uh, we need to establish correctness. Uh, we need to establish uh, security. Uh, to do that, we need to describe uh, how the reduction even handles uh, the random oracle, or generally the setup assumption uh, uh, we have established. Uh, we need to describe uh, how and over what we're going to sample. Um, we now have oracle machines we need to sample over. Uh, f for instance, uh, the adversaries. Um, as we said, an adversary may be perhaps unbounded, and thus may decide to keep uh, querying uh, the oracle to infinity and beyond. We saw that uh, a fully black box reduction uh, still leads to that set of assumption. Uh, recall there is a considerable work, um, as you can see on the slide, uh, some of it, uh, on black box reduction hierarchies. Rheingold, Trevisan, and Vedan um, described uh, a first fundamental abstract framework. On that later, later Bacher, Bruska, and Fislin created a much finer hierarchy uh, that we will review later. Uh, Hofkainz and Nowen um, introduced a concrete framework uh, to reason about reductions upon which uh, we built. Let us give some examples. Uh, common setup assumptions um, uh, in use are, of course, uh, the random oracle model, the ideal cipher model, um, common reference string uh, or random string. Um, you can have uh, more exotic uh, examples, uh, such as the random beacon. Uh, going back to the Lamport example, um, let us add the random oracle for a more efficient uh, randomness. Um, there are, now we have to consider reduction, right, for what we have uh, proven from the standard model, and the question is what, what exactly happens. Uh, there are a few questions. Um, at uh, the end of the day, uh, we need to show that uh, that little devil adversary did not break our Lamport signature scheme. Um, adding a random oracle means uh, our one-way function needs to query the oracle. Um, the reduction we seek uh, needs to handle our qu queries for the adversary. Um, note, um, we consider non-programmable reductions. That means uh, the reduction does not interfere with the oracle. Uh, we leave open uh, programmable uh, reductions. Um, th that is, uh, we aim for a fully black box non-programmable reduction. Um, we need to show that our scheme still is correct. Uh, a secure scheme that does nothing well, is kind of useless. Um, uh, does uh, giving access to the oracle interfere with uh, correctness? Uh, how do we define correctness? Uh, in uh, past uh, models, so that could be simply set membership, uh, we do a more concrete treatment in our work. Um, finally, um, we do not sample over the same adversary from the standard model. Uh, recall this is an adversary that has access to an oracle. It's an oracle machine. We do have to consider its oracle instantiation and its adversary. Um, the probability we sample is different. And recall the adversary can be unbounded. Uh, it could just attempt to read the whole oracle state. We tackled all these problems. In particular, we saw that the standard model uh, has a lifting correspondence to any well-defined uh, setup assumption. Uh, in detail, for any parameters p and q and some setup assumption m, uh, which satisfies uh, 
uh, certain properties, um, any fully black box non-programmable reduction uh, from P to Q naturally lifts to the set of assumption M. Note that we build on top of um, uh, Hofheinz and Iwin and not uh, the framework of uh, Rheingold, Treves, and Vadan, uh, which is uh, more abstract. Um, that uh, leaves the question where do we stand uh, in the uh, uh, fine hierarchy of Bacher, Bruska, and Fisley? Uh, as we said, um, we consider fully black box reductions. That means um, in, in, in their hierarchy, uh, the BBB kind, uh, we leave open the question uh, of uh, uh, the existence for co of lifting correspondences in, in uh, the other kinds. How do we define a setup assumption? We need a generic definition that uh, encompasses all established models. Uh, we could consider a set assumption as a construct uh, that samples over all possible functions, say over a domain x and equal domain y. Um, we sample with some distribution and we'll generally cover um, most uh, uh, oracles. However, um, we do have to consider unbound adversaries that could query the whole oracle state. And let us consider a random oracle that means an infinite state. That is, x could be infinite. Um, to handle that, um, we we break down x um, into a series of sets, and we progressively sample from there. To keep it simple, let us consider single parameter L. Uh, so we define a filtration um, x L uh, over x. That is, we create a sequences of uh, sets uh, that progressively cover um, uh, x. And we prove that if the sampling is what we call consistent, practically, that is, querying for more state uh, does not um, uh, alter the perceived prior distribution um, a Turing machine could have uh, queried. That is, let's say you query n bits of information and you query n plus one, that is, uh, and, and you try to forget the extra, you're not going to see a difference. We saw, if that is the case, we con converge to the desired distribution. Note that when we say infinite, we need countable. That is, x is still a discrete set. We do not uh, go into the real numbers. That is out of our scope. The parametric sampling um, that we described uh, extends uh, further um, and uh, forms the crux of uh, our proof. Now, what is the intuition we unearth with our proof? We already established that we are working with a measurable space over a countable set, which makes things more in in interesting uh, and essentially forces us to prove convergence for all our distributions. And as we said, we do that through parameterizing uh, access. Um, at the end of the day, though, we want to show that, let's say, the standard models on the left side and the standard on the right side have a primitive P and some instantiation of a F of uh, another primitive, and an adversary, uh, an unbound adversary in the standard model, uh, breaks P, then it will break F. Now, that fact we, we claim, and so is enough to show that um, any adversary, a different adversary with Oracle access um, in, in the setup assumption is, uh, that is able to break P, now is able to break the instantiation F that has access to all. That is our security proof now samples over Oracle instantiations. We do sample over all adversaries that have access to the Oracle O. Thus, we prove that uh, the reduction in the standard model can be used uh, to bound the advantage of adversaries uh, with uh, access to a particular Oracle instantiation. Recall from the previous uh, setup assumption slide that we need to parametrically allow access progressively to the state of the oracle. In the proof, we essentially define sequences of uh, instantiation of uh, f 
and also uh, sequences of, of uh, instantiations of um, uh, the adversary A. Now we need to model um, sampling over oracle instantiations. Let us first order all oracle instantiations, and for that we're going to use the security parameter lambda. So for each value of the security parameter lambda, uh, we're going to create a row, and uh, for each particular oracle instantiation, as we increase the parameter lambda, uh, we get a path. If an adversary P breaks an instantiation of a primitive P, then uh, that means that for some path, after some security parameter value, uh, the probability of our construction being equal to 1 is uh, non negligible to the security parameter lambda. Uh, let us call that path a red path. Thus, we divide our proof into two segments. First, we saw that a fully black box reduction in the standard model uh, implies the existence of a correspondence, a reflective one, right? Um, of expectation between each row of uh, these paths uh, we have uh, described. Uh, that means again that uh, if the expectation is non negligible on the left, then it is non negligible, it's a non negligible function on the right. Um, the second step now uh, that we saw is that uh, we can use this expectation over um, all of the, the paths uh, that uh, define oracle instantiations uh, to bound the advantage of the adversary in the setup assumption. And thus, we, we have started with a reduction in the standard model, and we have proven that there exists a reduction in um, the setup assumption. To sum up, we showed that any non-programmable fully black box reduction in the standard model leads to set of assumptions uh, that are well defined, even if the adversaries are inefficient. We left open the question uh, about uh, the, uh, the rest of the hierarchy of Bakker, Brusk, and Fisling. Uh, in particular, if we can uh, extend this lifting correspondence. Uh, to different kinds of uh, reductions. Feel free to shoot us an email uh, with any questions. Uh, we're always happy to discuss and chat. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.